Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Sunday School. I'm glad you decided to join me this week. This week's been a really good one. We've had some sun. We've had some rain. We've had Jesus the entire week with us. That's a fantastic week if you ask me. Well, you know what comes next in Sunday School, don't you? That's right. A song that talks about focusing on Jesus, fixing our eyes on Him. So that's what we're going to do, and I'll see you on the other side. Again, a song that speaks about fixing our eyes on Jesus. If we do, I think everything comes in clearer. But sometimes our eyes get a little off the focus point. And I was thinking about a time when my husband and I, Rick, had to buy a new car. And we were all excited, and I was about to get into the car just to kind of see what it was like. And as I was getting in, a bird pooped right on my forehead. I have a picture somewhere of it because again, good things happen. And then that. But also in that same week, I remember going out with the girls as well, my daughters, and with Rick, and we got some ice cream. And yeah, you probably already guessed it. <laughs> ice cream all over me because I wasn't licking it fast enough. Ah! So I had a really rough week that week because I got pooped on and I had some stuff dripped all over me. And in our story today, we're following along in the book of Acts in chapters 27 and 28 hearing about some people with Paul who had a little bit of a hard time, a little bit of 
trouble going on in their week, in their months, maybe even in the year. So sit back and watch this awesome story and I'll see you when it's finished. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapters 27 and 28. Paul faced many difficult days because he taught so boldly about Jesus. He was beaten, made fun of, thrown into jail and run out of town. At last, in Jerusalem, Paul was arrested by Roman soldiers after a mob tried to kill him. He speaks against our law! Get, get, get rid of that guy! No. Paul paced in his prison cell. The Lord stood next to him. Be brave. You have told people about me in Jerusalem. You must do the same in Rome. Because a group of Jews were plotting to kill him, Paul was taken to the governor in Caesarea. From there, he was ordered to Rome to stand trial before Caesar. Then, he was handed off to a Roman commander for the sea journey. I am Julius of the Imperial Guard. I am very imperious, but also a reasonable human being. Glad to hear it. Julius allowed Paul to visit with friends as they stopped at the port city of Sidon. From there, they sailed around Cyprus, transferred to a ship from Egypt, carrying grain to Italy. The ship fought against the wind for many days until they arrived in a town on the island of Crete called Fair Havens. It was already well into October, a risky time for sea travel. Men, I can see that our trip is going to be dangerous. The ship will be lost and our own lives will be in danger. A reasonable concern. The pilot and ship's owner wanted to reach a better harbor for the winter. Pish posh, we can make it to Phoenix. Well. Feel that gentle southerly breeze. Perfection. We leave at once. Anchors away. But very soon, the gentle breeze transformed. Within a short time, the wind beat against the ship with the strength of a hurricane. The pilot gave up fighting the gale. Hoist the lifeboat. Secure ropes around the bow. Jettison the cargo. In the midst of the chaos, the Lord sent an angel to Paul. The next morning, Paul withstood the storm to encourage the crew and passengers. 276 people. A uh, first, uh, not to say I told you so, but uh, I told you so. Second, not a problem. Last night, an angel from God told me, do not be afraid, Paul. You must go on trial in front of Caesar. God has shown his grace by sparing the lives of all those sailing with you. But we must run the ship onto an island. On the 14th night of the storm, the sailors realized they were nearing land. The water is only 90 feet deep here. Drop the anchor. The crew was so afraid of crashing against the rocks that they lowered the lifeboats, planning to escape and leave the passengers. Julius, these men must stay with the ship. If they don't, you can't be saved. A reasonable request. Cut the ropes. The soldiers cut the ropes so the crew could not escape. Just before dawn, Paul gathered everyone on board, shouting above the wind. Not a problem. None of you will lose a single hair from your head. Now. I'm asking you to eat so you can live. Paul took bread and thanked God. He then broke the bread and ate it. Everyone was filled with hope while they had some food to eat as the gray morning dawned. There's the beach. Lift the anchors and we'll run her aground. But as the pilot steered desperately for shore, the ship hit a sandbar and began to break into pieces. The soldiers were planning to kill Paul and the other prisoners to keep them from swimming to freedom. Stop! Don't hurt them! Paul must live! Everyone overboard, swim to land or grab a piece of the wreckage! Miraculously, everyone made it to shore, just as God had promised. Welcome to Malta! The people of Malta were unusually kind as they built a fire to welcome this large group of wet, 
and stranded visitors. I'll fetch some more firewood. Paul tossed sticks into the fire. Then, a deadly snake slithered out and sunk his teeth into Paul's head. This man must be a murderer. The guards won't let him live. Not a problem, totally fine. Paul simply shook the snake into the fire. When the people saw he was unharmed, they decided he was a god. Publius, a chief official, welcomed Paul and the others into his home. Take whatever you need. Paul discovered that Publius, his father, was very sick. So he prayed. Jesus, please, heal this man. Publius, his father, was made well. All the sick people on the island flocked to see Paul, and they too were healed. Paul had so much respect on Malta that when it was time to leave, the people of Malta gave him all the supplies they needed. Bon voyage! At long last, Paul neared Rome. The believers had heard he was on his way and traveled to meet him. Welcome to Rome. I thank God for you all. In Rome, Paul was allowed to live in his own home, under guard. For two years, he welcomed anyone who came to see him. He told Jews and Gentiles alike the good news of Jesus, just as God promised he would. So I'm just gonna go out there and say that the bird dropping on my face and the ice cream melting all over me that day, that week, didn't compare to anything like what happened in our story today. When we remember who Paul was and who he became, the latter was something pretty sweet. All Paul wanted was to be able to share the good news about who Jesus is and was. He wanted to meet with anybody he could and just proclaim the goodness of Jesus. And in doing so, he had many rough weeks, many rough months. He was beaten, made fun of, put in jail, run out of town. Paul would do anything he could to let anybody know. And now it comes to the point where he's being arrested and needs to go to Rome, which is in just next door. So he has to get on board a ship. And while he's on this ship, ugh, it was a rough few days, let's say. The ship is tossed and turned. They have to stop at a certain point. They get shipwrecked. Oh my goodness, that's the worst that could happen. But while they're in this town called Malta, Paul has an experience where he is bitten by a snake. Oh, but at the same point, he doesn't even flinch. He didn't flinch at the shipwreck. He didn't flinch necessarily in the wind tossing and, and shoving the boat this way and that way. Because when God told him to be brave, way back before the trip, Paul was thinking, there's a better outcome here. So even in all those things, Paul believed that God had something bigger and better in store. So from a shipwreck, to tossing and turning on the boat, to being bit by a snake, Paul knew that God had something better for him. And I was thinking about that, and in the story today, it reminds us that when we, when we know Jesus, it changes the way that we see our problems. Sometimes we think our problems are so huge and that we're just gonna fall apart. But when we look into the eyes of Jesus and we learn from him and trust him, our outcome can be different. It may not be exactly the easiest thing, but our outcome is different because we're following after God. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Listen to what he's guiding you to do. And then maybe all you have to do is wipe the bird poop off your forehead. And then maybe you just change your shirt and the outcome's a little bit different than, oh my goodness, can you believe it? Knowing Jesus will and does change the way that you see your problems because God wants the best for you. So in knowing his son, that is the best. So today, I ask for you to think about the week ahead and maybe there's gonna come something that's gonna just mess with you. Stop and think before you react and say, if I do this differently and I focus my thoughts on God, what will the outcome be? You know right now that God is going to be with you through whatever that situation is. So trust him, focus in on him and rely on the fact that the God above is looking out for you. He loves you. 
So this week, I pray for you to have encounters with him like that, that you would just trust and know that he is guiding that path. And when you know him, he's gonna change the outcome for you. Let's pray. Jesus, today we thank you for the fact that you are an amazing one that just travels ahead of us. You follow behind us, that you walk beside us. And when we fix our eyes on you and we focus in on what you have asked us to do, we know that our outcomes will be different. Sometimes they may not be the easiest, but when you are in control and we focus in on you, the little things that we think are big aren't gonna be as bad. So thank you, Jesus, for the example of Paul, Paul today and how he focused in on you. He knew that the outcome was different because of who he served. So I ask you today, Lord Jesus, to be with my friends this week, that if a problem arises, that they would focus in on you and to think about a different outcome because of who you are in their lives. I ask you also to bless their families, keep them safe, keep them healthy, Lord. And again, help them to have a super fantastic week this week. But sooner and we pray, amen. See you next week.